I'm going to be talking to Sam Adel Samid, who's an automotive engineer and EV analyst for Guidehouse Insights. And he just has returned from an in-depth briefing with GM's, uh, with Cadillac's uh, team uh, about the Lyric EV. So all kinds of updates to the Ultium platform and battery. Eager to hear about it. Welcome to the interview, Sam. Uh, good to be back with you again, Markham. Well, I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, so what did you hear from the briefing team? Yeah, I spent about uh, almost three hours this morning with uh, members of the uh, design team at Cadillac. We walked through the design studio uh, where they've been working on the Lyric, um, as well as with uh, the various engineering teams working on the powertrain, the batteries, and, and the chassis of the vehicle. Um, and this, you know, this is a really important vehicle, perhaps the most important vehicle for for Cadillac in many decades because it marks the beginning of their transformation to an all EV brand. It's it's their first pure battery electric vehicle. They previously have sold a couple of plug-in hybrids, the ELR, which was a coupe based on the Gen 1 Volt, Chevy Volt, and they had a plug-in hybrid version of the, the CT6 sedan for a couple of years. But this is the one that is, is really setting the stage for where Cadillac wants to go over the next decade. Um, it's a five-seat, two-row um, crossover EV, um, roughly about the size, uh, kind of slots in size-wise between the current X-T5 and X-T6. Um, and uh, it's coming out next spring. Um, it'll have a 300 mile, upward, upwards of 300 mile range. Um, and it's a, it's a fabulous looking vehicle, both inside and out. And well, I, what what could you tell us about the the Ultium platform and battery? Uh, uh, you and I have done a few interviews about it already. It sounds like it's pretty advanced. Uh, any new uh, tricks up GM's sleeve? Uh, not a whole lot in terms of new tricks. It did uh, reveal a few more details about it. So the the Lyric. Uh, will launch with a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. So this is uh, using the, the Altium system that we first heard about uh, almost eight, what, uh, 16, 17 months ago now, March of last year. Um, and so it, it's using their new cells that they've developed with LG Chem, uh, which are different from what they currently have in the Chevrolet Bolt, which is a whole other story that uh, we can talk about sometime, but um, they're, uh, they're, it's, a, it's a new chemistry. Uh, it's a nickel metal or nickel manganese cobalt aluminum. Uh, so it reduces the cobalt content by about 70% compared to what's in the, the bolt cells. Uh, so it brings the cost down. And it's a, it's a standardized cell format that they're going to be using across a wide range of vehicles and also fits within a standardized module format. So um, as we've talked about before, I think the, uh, one of the things that they've done with this is they've taken the battery management system, which traditionally has been done at the pack level, uh, taking in information from all the modules and managing everything at the pack level, and move that down and integrated it into each individual module. So the module has that battery management system. It knows what the chemistry of that is, and it's permanently installed in that module. Uh, so it knows what the chemistry is, and there's some programmability in there that allows for uh, balancing the output of each individual module. Um, and for various vehicle configurations of, uh, from GM that are going to be using the Altium system, they'll have differing numbers of modules in there, ranging from as low as six for some smaller vehicles uh, up to uh, as many as 24 for the upcoming GMC Hummer. Um, the Lyric will have 12 modules in there with 24 cells in each one, um, and it's a 400 volt architecture. The, the Hummer battery is basically two Lyric batteries stacked vertically on top of each other, so two layers of 12 modules. Uh, and as I said, that's expected to give a, a range of over 300 miles. Um, the, the launch version of the Lyric that's coming out is a single motor rear wheel drive configuration with about uh, a 250 kilowatt uh, motor. And later on in the model year, they're gonna add an all wheel drive version that adds another 180 kilowatt motor to the front axle. Now, I understand that uh, the, uh, the battery management system is now going to be wireless. Uh, that's what I was reading on a press release today. Uh, how is that an advantage? So, uh, 
because you've got the, the battery management uh, embedded within each of the modules, they need to communicate with each other as well as the overall battery controller. And rather than have um, wiring, separate, a separate set of communications wiring for all of that to tie it all together, they're using a, a, a new wireless system, wireless communications system. And talking to the, uh, the battery engineers this morning, one of the things they, they talked about is one of the, with generally, in, in general, with any electrical or electronic systems, the, the, the most failure prone components are actually connectors, connectors and, and the wiring itself. Uh, and so by eliminating the wiring and going to a wireless system for that, what that does allows them to do is actually reduce the weight and the mechanical complexity of the battery system um, and also makes it more reliable. Uh, and so uh, the, the communications between the modules and the overall battery controller are, um, are all encrypted. Uh, and they've got um, some redundancy built into there. So modules can either... Um, communicate directly with the, the main battery controller, or um, they can. They also have what they call a hop mode, which basically creates a mesh among them. So if there's any, if you know, if there's packet drops or any communications challenges, it can actually just the modules can will actually send the messages across each other to the main controller uh, that may be furthest away. So they've, they've tried to do a lot of things to, to both make it more reliable, uh, more secure, and also um, more um, uh, lower, lower in weight uh, and mechanical complexity to help reduce the cost. Is this a, a GM innovation or is this the way the industry is going and other companies are doing it already? Uh, GM is, I believe, the first manufacturer to do it. Um, there have been other companies, um, uh, at least you know, some of the supplier companies that have shown off some of the technology. Uh, Texas Instruments, for example, GM hasn't has, has not said who um, who is supplying the various components for this system. Uh, but TI has previously, um, about middle of last year, did a, a briefing where they talked about their wireless battery management system. Uh, NXP also has a similar system. Uh, so I, I do expect this type of technology to start appearing in, um, in batteries from other OEMs over the next couple of years. Uh, but GM, I believe, is the first to get it into production. Final question, Sam. Uh, I also understand the battery was designed to be recycled, and that's, of course, has been a, a growing issue as we, you know, we depend more and more on batteries, have to produce a, a lot of them. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, so um, that, the, that, ba that uh, battery management system in the modules is part of uh, GM's strategy to extend the lifespan of these batteries. So, uh, once a vehicle, once a battery has reached the end of its useful life in a vehicle, when its capacity has dropped to maybe 75 or 70 percent of its original capacity, that still it leaves a lot of capacity that's usable for that. Uh, so what they're part of, part of the reason why they've gone to this architecture is now they can when it, when they take that module out of a vehicle, they can take that and put it in a rack to do second life applications with, for stationary storage. Um, and they can mix and mix and match modules that came from different vehicles that might ha might even have different chemistries. And because of that programmable BMS, they can balance out the output of those. So they can, you know, one of the challenges with that Second Life application up until now is being able to match the outputs of batteries from different sources. They can do that now in software. And then when you get to the end of that useful life, you know, which instead of you know, maybe being maybe eight or 10 years, maybe now you're talking 20 years, uh, then you, they can, they're, they're also working on recycling. Uh, so you can then take that module, break it down, and recover most of the raw materials from that. Uh, but before we get there, you know, before, before that becomes economically viable, I mean, for, for that kind of recycling to be economically viable, you have to have a, a critical mass of batteries that have reached the end of their life. And so far, you know, we haven't really had enough EVs on the road that have reached the end of their life to make that uh, useful. But what GM is doing from day one uh, is they are they're working with a partner company uh, whose name escapes me at the moment um, to do recycling of materials from uh, the production process. Uh, you know, when they're producing these cells, 
they uh, they coat the they do the coating process of the electrodes. Uh, they have uh, aluminum and, and copper foils that they coat for the anodes and cathodes. Uh, and some of that material uh, is cut off uh, during the manufacturing process, the assembly process of the cells. Some of it is scrapped because it didn't meet quality standards for whatever reason. So there's always some material that comes out of the manufacturing process. And they're working from day one to take that and recycle that, that scrap material uh, and recover as much of the raw material from that as they can and feed that back into the manufacturing process. So you'll see uh, recycling uh, batteries building in stages over the coming years uh, as we start to build more batteries. And then as we have more and more vehicles on the road that reach the end of their lifespan. Sam, always appreciate your insights. Thank you very much. Happy to help, uh, Markham. Have a great day.